Um, today I'm going to try a hip mobility flow. Um, it's a lot of stuff that I've been working on lately in my home practice um, quarantine time. So um, let's get started in a child's pose. You can bring your knees out wide and reach your arms forward in front of you. Reach out long through each fingertip and stretch your hips back towards your heels. Lengthen, lengthen the belly too, so as you stretch nice and long through the low back, you feel nice and open across the front body as well. Let your head relax down into your mat. Feel some stretch in your armpits. And you just take three deep breaths here. Feel your ribcage expand and contract. And every time you exhale, see if you can just settle in a little deeper. Dry yourself up. We're going to come into a quadruped position, so that means all fours. Um, bring your hands underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. Um, we're going to do a little cat cow to begin with. So let's arch your back, look forward for the cow, and then exhale, curl in, tuck your tail, make nice and wide across your upper back for your cat. Inhale, cow, and squeeze the shoulder blades in. Exhale, cat, shoulder blades pull further apart. Big lift of the low belly. Inhale, cow, and exhale, cat. And then come back to center. We're going to do three more now with the fingers turned back. So you might have less range of motion. Um, but do something so you can distract yourself from your hands. If you absolutely need to, walk your knees in a little closer to give yourself some relief. But um, if this is available here, even if it's a very small, minimal movement of your spine, just start to get a little comfortable here. We're not going to do a huge amount of upper body strength, so not a lot of rest today, but this will be a good way to, to get a warm down. So again, arching into the cow. Exhale, round scoop into the cat. Let yourself get lighter with nervous. Inhale, let your chest pulling forward, tail reaching up and back. Exhale, feel everything scoop and round. Lift your armpits higher, lift your belly button higher. One more time, inhale. And exhale. And then come back to center. Do your fingers back. If you need to shake out your hands from it, shake them out. If you don't want to quite go that dramatic, but you want to give them a little relief, you can just draw your fingers in on your mat a couple times, scrunching up. And then we're going to uh, go into a little bit of opposite arm and leg movements. So let's start with our left arm forward and the right knee back or right leg back, starting with a nice flat back. So pull the belly in, lift your rib cage up and in. And pressing back through your right heel, slightly drawing in through your right inner thigh. And then bring your right knee and your left elbow to each other, tenting, rounding up like the cat. And exhale, extend long and flat. Sorry, exhale, round in, curling in, and then inhale to extend long. Two more, exhale, curl in, making yourself small. Inhale, lengthen out. And last time, exhale, hold, press the floor away with your right hand, and long out. Now we're gonna take our left arm, bring the elbow back so you're in a cactus arm position, and then lift your right knee up. So you're gonna hide your position with your right leg. Right knee and left elbow come towards each other and out. Towards each other and out. Last two. 
Last one. And then extend out wide, long through your right arm, sorry, left arm and long through your right leg. Still flexing through your right heel using your right glute. Bring your left hand down to the floor and take your right knee behind your left knee. Just set it, tap it down for a moment and tap your toes down for a moment so you can take some weight out of your hands and your arms. I know I said I'm not gonna be doing much on the arms and that mat's kind of a little bit on the arms. Uh, so modify whenever you need, take breaks whenever you need. And I'm gonna bring my right heel back up and I'm gonna bring my right leg up with my foot flexed and then I'm gonna pulse it up, just really trying to get into the glutes a little bit more. Keeping this out of my spine, I just really try to squeeze the glutes and press my right heel up. Five, four, three, two, one. Good, set it back down behind the other knee. You can tuck your toes or go flat. I'm gonna reach my arms a little bit further forward in front of me and then sit back so I feel it stretch my right outer hip. And then inhale, come back up, walk your hands back underneath your shoulders, send your right leg back. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So now my right arm goes forward, my left leg extends back. You can either tuck your right toes or keep them flat, whatever is more comfortable, more stable for you. But really flex for your left foot so you're getting your left glute turned on right away. Keep pressing with your stabilizing arm so you're not sinking out into that shoulder joint. Exhale, knee towards elbow. Inhale to extend long. Exhale, draw it in, scoop the belly. Inhale, long flat. Ribs are still pulled up and in. Two more. Put the knee to the elbow. Extend out, press through the heel. Last time, knee to elbow. And then extend out. Nice and long. Then cactus your right arm. Hide it through your left leg. And draw the knee to the elbow. And out. Knee to elbow. And out. Knee to elbow, and out, just one more. Knee to elbow, out, extend out, long through your right arm, out long through your left leg, keep pressing through your left heel, keep pressing the floor away with your left hand, your left arm, or left shoulder. And then release your right hand down, and draw your left knee behind your right knee, and tuck the toes, and just sit back for a moment, taking the weight out of your hands, bringing the weight more into the lower body. Always better to have better form for these than to, you know, there should be a struggle, but if you're losing your form and you're really sinking into your shoulders, you know, modify. Maybe just do the leg and don't do both arms off the floor for a little while. All right, moving on into our glute activation here. So I'm going to flex my left foot, bring it up. I'm still cross. My knee is still cross midline behind my other knee. And bring the leg up and pulse it up. Five, four, three, two, one. And then bringing the knee behind the knee again. Walk the hands forward, maybe tend up on the fingers. And try to sit back and feel the stretch in the hip. And then walk your hands back. Send your left leg back into the quadruped. If you start where your knees are underneath your hips, your hands are underneath your shoulders, tuck your toes, and then press your hips forward, press back. You should be in a pretty close to where you need to be for your downward facing dog. You can always adjust if you need to, but that should be, should be pretty close. And then from here, bring the right leg high. Step your right foot in between your hands. And right away, bring your left knee down towards the floor, coming onto your left ankle. And reach wide out to the side. I'm going to try to do that for all of these. I'm going to try to remember as optional how you want to be with your arms. So we're just going to stretch the front of the hip and lift up, maybe getting a bit of a back bend. And then bring the hands to the floor in front of you. Tuck your back toes. Step your left foot to meet your right foot. Take a forward fold, inhale, 
halfway lift, and you long through your spine. And then all the way up to a mountain pose. Exhale, fold. Now step your right leg back. Right away, knee goes down to the floor. Same thing. And sweep up, stretch in the front of the hip, maybe a little bit of a back bend. And reach your arms back. Tuck your toes, step back into a down facing dog. From here, we're going to flow forward into a plank and bring the knees down to the floor. Instead of doing chaturangas, we're just going to work on a little bit more arching of the back, a little bit more of a fluid movement. So less about um, strength of the hands and more opening up some stuff in the hips and the shoulders, possibly. So from here, we're going to, with the knees down, kind of scoop forward. Your chin comes down and then scoop up. You can go into a little bit of a cobra and lift off into an upward facing dog with the thighs hovering and back to downward facing dog. And then the same thing, starting on the other side. Left leg comes up, send your left leg forward in between your hands, bring your right knee down, reach the arms up, lift through your chest. And you chase the line with your hands. Step your right toes, step your right foot to meet your left foot, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, getting long, and all the way up into mountain pose. Exhale, forward fold. Send your left leg back, bring your left knee down, and reach up. And retrace the line with the hands. Tuck your back toes. Send your right leg back downward dog. Come forward into a plank. Bring your knees down to the floor. Chin to the floor. Really arch in the back and sliding through. Coming up into smaller, bigger back bend of your choice. And exhale back. Downward facing dog. A couple more of these. Lift your right leg high, look forward, step your right foot in between your hands, left knee comes down, reach the arms back, and retrace line with the arms, tuck your left toes, step your left foot to meet your right foot, lower fold, halfway lift, and then all the way up into a mountain pose. Always looking up towards your hands, like think of the sides of your body as you come to the top. And then just dive again, arms come out. Send your right leg back, right knee to the floor, arms out. So the hips are pressing forward, left knee's going more forward. And retrace along with your arms, tuck your toes, send your left leg back. And your downward facing dog, come forward into your plank, draw your knees to the floor, arch your back, so really trying to get that arch in your spine, and draw your chest through, smaller, bigger back bend, back to downward facing dog. This time left leg comes up, bring your left leg forward, draw your right knee down, Reach your arms back. And trace the line with the arms. Tuck your toes. Tuck your right foot to meet the left. Forward fold. Halfway lift. All the way up into mom pose. Exhale. Forward fold. Step your left leg back. Draw your left knee down. Take your back bend. And retrace the arms, tuck your toes, step back downward facing dog, forward into the plank, knees down, sneakers through, back bend, and back to downward facing dog. One more set each side, look forward, right leg comes up, step your right foot in between your hands, left knee comes down, sweep your arms back. And you trace the line with your arms, tuck your toes, step your left foot to meet your right. 
forward fold, halfway lift, and arms. And dive back down. Step your right leg back, knee down. Come up into your backward bend. Interest the line with your arms. Step your left leg back, downward facing dog. Come forward into a plank, bring your knees down, arch yourself um, through, lift your chest, take your back bend, downward facing dog. Left leg comes up, look forward, step your left foot in between your hands, right knee down towards the floor, and reach up for your back bend. You trace the line with your arms, tuck your right toes, step your right foot to meet your left, forward fold. Halfway lift, and then all the way up. And then exhale as you fold back down again. Lift and left leg steps back, knee down. Reach your arms back, take your back bend. And sweep your hands forward. Tuck your toes, come back into your downward facing dog. And look forward in front of you. And either step or jump your feet to meet your hands. If you're jumping, bend your knees, get that nice arch, just like we're doing every time in those um, knees, chest, chin. And use that to lift yourself up like Halfway lift, and all the way up. Hands down by your side. We're going to do a few hip cars. So I'm going to turn to face you guys here for a moment. So for the hip cars, right knee is going to come up. Right knee goes out to the side, and then turn the shin parallel to the floor, and sweep your right knee back. For these, we're going to go behind the other knee, just like we did seated. And then come all the way back out the same way you came in. And set your right foot down. Try the same thing with the left. Left knee comes up. And bring it out to the side, externally rotate, then internally rotate to turn the femur back parallel. Sweep it back behind. Knee behind knee, a little bend. Retrace your steps to come back out. All right, a couple more times. Right knee comes up, out to the side. Heel comes up, send it back. Knee behind knee, a little bend of your standing leg. Retrace your steps. This time as you retrace your steps, instead of just coming forward, come into a figure four, Flex your right foot, hands to prayer, set your hips low. And then come back up, set your right leg down. Same thing left side, left leg comes up. Bring it out to the side, turn the shin up. Reach it back behind, you feel the glute working. Knee behind knee, hold on. Retrace the steps, but then instead of just bringing the foot down, cross the foot over, flex your foot, sit both hips back, so weight shifting back slightly, figure four. And then bring your left leg down one more time each side. Little right hand, if you want to try a little balance challenge, hands towards your chest or even reverse prayer. Knee goes out to the side, heel comes up, send it behind, knee behind knee. Retrace your steps, and then into a figure four. Flex your right foot. If you're doing the reverse prayer, draw your shoulders down and squeeze in from the top of the shoulder blade slightly. And come on out on that side. The last one, left side, left knee comes up. Bring your knee out to the side, turn your heel up, reach it back, knee behind knee, and retrace your steps, cross the ankle over, sit your hips low, flex your left foot, draw the shoulder blades in slightly, lift your chest, lift underneath your armpits, and then come back. 
back up, set that foot down, release it if you're in the reverse prayer, bring your arms up over your head, and just step your right foot across the left, and take a forward fold, and then walk your hands slightly over towards the right, to stretch the hip a little bit more. Walk the hands back to center, come back up, other side, my foot steps back, left leg steps over right, take a forward fold, if the hands go down to the floor, you don't go down to use blocks, you can just bring your hands towards your shins, pressing your chest forward, keeping long, and then turn towards the left to get a little bit more stretch in the hip. Notice if your weight shifts left, keep drawing your weight and your legs back towards the center. And then come back to center and come back up. Step your left leg back. Already should be feeling the hips pretty good. So hopefully warmed up enough for our flow. And come to the top of the mat. Sit your hips low. You can touch your fingertips towards the floor. See if you can keep your hips that low as you lift your arms up for a chair. Draw the shoulders down. Lift up underneath your armpits, feel the bottom of your ribs, kind of tilting up, then squeeze it in through the bottom of the ribs as well. And then from here, you can either bring your hands to your hips or you can bring your hands down into a prayer. We're going to come up onto our toes and lower the butt towards the heels. So this is a transition. If this transition doesn't work for you, modify, bring your hands to blocks, bring your hands to the floor. But if this works for you, it's kind of a fun way to play with the control going down and the strength going down in your legs. So we're going to tilt our knees to the floor and then lift up. Keep the toes tucked, bring your hands behind your ribs and just lift up for a modified version of camel pose. We'll come out the same way. So again, if you need the help, take the help. Otherwise, squeeze in. Whew, lift your knees up. Yeah, I need the help to balance today. And then sit your heels down. Come back up into your chair. It's low, chest high. Send your right leg back into a crescent lunge. So left leg stays bent, parallel to the floor, high on the right toes. And then from your crescent, we're going to open up into a skandasana. So I'm going to uh, bring my right heel down, and I'm going to lift my left heel up as I bring my body over in this direction. Um, right elbow towards the inside of my right leg. You can come up onto your toes. Um, that might help if the hips are tight. You can bring your hands to balance on the floor in front of you. Right? Don't strain the knee. Knees tracking over your ankle. Just allowing ourselves to get a little bit more open here in the hips. And then from there, just lift and expand out into a warrior two. Turn the left thigh out, shoulders over hips, reach long out through your arms, work past your front fingertips. And take a reverse warrior, legs stay the same, but arms can extend the left arm up, right arm at your right thigh, never pressing into the knee, but you can use it wrapping around the thigh or wrapping around the body. And then stretch the left side body. And then we're going to turn our chest forward, kind of like we we're in the crescent lunge. I'm going to bring my hands to touch my thumbs crossed. You can choose what arm duration you would like. But I'm going to roll back into the crescent lunge on my back toes. Weight's going to shift into the front leg to come into warrior three. So press into the front leg and lift off. Bring your weight back over your left ankle. Extend back through your right heel, everything one long line. And then from here, draw your right knee out. Whew. Draw your right knee out, spiraling it out to the side like the hydrant and into the figure four. That is quite a balance challenge. Back into your chair, arms up. And then exhale, take a forward fold. 
Step your legs back. Bring yourself into your plank. Lower your knees. Arch. Curl through. Upward facing dog or cobra. Come back to down facing dog. Two more breaths here. Look forward, either step or jump forward. So again, if you're jumping, bend your knees, really arch, arch, and use that power from your back body to help you jump up. And lift your chest, halfway lift, and then all the way back up, tall. I'm gonna switch to the side of the mat, so I think I'll just do better that way, but we will do the same thing with the left side. So sitting out into the chair, hands to the floor, Lift up, so pulling the ribs in, but also tilting the bottom of the rib cage slightly up and forward. So as the inner thighs in towards each other, slightly back behind you. And then you can bring your hands towards your chest, you can bring your hands to your hips, come up onto your toes, lower your hips towards your heels with control. Tilt from the pelvis to draw your knees to the floor. Hands come up on the back of the rib cage. Toes stay tucked. Version of camel. Bring the shoulders back as you lift your chest. All the way back to center. Again, see if you can control that lift. I think I over did on the first one. It's not easy. Bring the knees back up. Heels down. Back up into your chair. And then this time we'll step the left leg back for the crescent. So stay bent into your right leg. Make sure you square your hips. You find that perfect space where you can squeeze your back glute. And you can feel that your right leg is slightly drawing out. Right legs are slightly pulling away from each other. From here we're going into the skandhasana of the lunge. So slide out on your back foot like you were going to go into your warrior two. But then come up onto your right heel. And... Just find the place where you can feel the stretch, the opening in your hip. Still nice and long through your spine. So notice if you're rounding a lot, wherever your arms are, hands forward or in the prayer position, see if you can lift your chest more, just like when you're in Malasana. And then using that to reach out into your warrior two. And externally rotating through your right leg now. Lengthening across your arms, lengthening across your hips. Look forward to your right fingertips and then reverse. Or staying low in your right leg, but lift it around your joints. And then we'll bring the arms forward and across the thumbs. So you can choose hands to your hips is a perfectly fine option for a little bit more help with the balance. Um, turning into basically your crescent lunge legs on the back toes. And then we'll lift off into warrior three. Press through your left heel, shift your weight more over your right ankle, lengthening, lengthening long from your fingertips back towards your heel, and then start to bring your leg out like you're doing that hydrant, and draw yourself back up forward and into your figure four. Hips low, flex your left foot, square the hips back, lift your chest wide across your collarbones. Same thing, left leg down, arms up over your head, exhale the forward fold, inhale the lift, and then step the legs back, and bring the knees down, again, pull the body through, lift your chest, choose your back bend, and back up into our facing dot, three more breaths here, and every time come back to that Space you feel in the front of the hips. So stay lifted through your low belly, lengthen out of your low back. Nice and wide across your shoulders, your chest. And then look forward. You're going to try the jump. Again, bend your knees, really arch your back. And lift up. Forward fold. All the way back up into mountain pose. And 
and then switch sides. You stay where you are. From our mountain pose, bend your knees, bring your hands to the floor, and lift up into chair. From your chair, you can bring your hands to your chest, to your hips, to the floor, come up into your heels, lower your hips towards your heels, lower your knees towards the floor, Hands towards your hips, or if you like a different variation, you can bring your hands into a different place. You can lower the tops of the feet to the floor. I'm off my mat, so I'm just getting to a place where my knees have more padding. All right, take your back bend, take your version of camel. If that reaching out wide through the arms in the lunges at the beginning felt good, you could try a version of that, reaching your arms out. And then with control, coming back to center. Bring the glutes towards the heels. If the feet walked away, bring them a little closer. And try to lift off. Heels down, back up into the chair. Step your right leg back. So you're in the crescent lunge. Press through the bottom end of your foot. Use your strong right glute. Bring your chest over your hips. Or one of the best ways to describe it is the back of your head should be in line with the back of your, um, your low back, right? That should be in one line. So if you tend to be reaching forward like this, make sure the back of your head is back in line with the back of your hips. And then we'll go into our Skandasana, so turning to the right foot out, bend your right knee, knee tracks over your ankle, left heel comes up. Try to stay, this is mine, I won't always run forward, so don't do that. Press your collarbones wide and keep your chest lengthening, your spine lengthening as you work into your right hip. Into our warrior two. Adjust your feet whenever you need to. Get them right, even if it's not quite as smooth. And take your reverse warrior. And reach both arms, cartwheeling forward. Roll onto the right big toe again. Strong glutes. Press into your left leg. Take your warrior three. You know the balance challenge that's coming. You're gonna hydrant the right leg. Wrap it around. Coming into your figure four. And then set it down. Step over your head. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale. And step it back. And just going right into the knees down. Arching it up. Draw yourself through. Take a small back bend. Take a bigger back bend. Go back into your downward facing dog. One more of these on the left. So look forward. Bend your knees, either step or jump. And if you're jumping, really arch your back, pull your belly in. Imagine you're going to touch your heels to your butt. Maybe you do. Lift your chest forward, forward fold. Arms up over your head, lift up tall. Switching back to this side. And then sit your hips low, really pull your belly in, pull your tail down as you sit low, touch the floor and come up into your chair. Hands towards your chest, up onto your toes. Slowly with control, lower your butt towards your heels. Tilt the pelvis forward, draw your knees towards the floor. And so I'll end up off mats, so make adjustments if you need to, or just be smart enough to give yourself some space and you set it up. Hands can come towards your back, towards your hips, or if you did on the other side, you can kind of get that X Expansion out, externally rotating out through your arms, reaching out towards the sides. And then come back up. And again, walk your knees in if you need to. Bring your butt towards your heels. Use the weight of your torso also. Lean back to kind of float. That's the way to do it. <laughs> float your knees up off the floor. 
And heels down, back up into chair. And send your left leg back into the lunge. Square your hips. This is a harder side for me to get my hips square. So take some moment. And go into that skandasana. So turn out with your left foot. Matrix over ankle. Right heel comes up. You can try to keep your spine long. Notice if you're rounding with the heads of the shoulders forward. See if you can draw them back. If you're really low, you can also kind of press into your, your leg or your course, you can use the floor. All the way up, opening up into a warrior two on this side. And then reverse your warrior, lengthening through the sides of the body. Cartwheel the arms forward, cross your thumbs, roll into your left big toe. Reach just into the right leg, up into warrior three, flex your back heel. Make sure you're not hyperextending through your right leg, so bend your knee if you need to to find more control, more sense of lift up into your hip. Back this, or higher into to stay your left leg. Draw it around into a figure four. Your hips, zip the chest up, send your left leg down, hands up over your head, forward fold, holding your left leg lift, and then step back, roll your knees down, arch your back, and through, shoulders back, taking some room of the back bend into a downward facing dog. We're going to go through that one more time, right and left side, and just adding on a couple of uh, curiosities. <laughs> so bend your knees, either step or jump. Again, if you're jumping, you can try. If I did kind of a not so great touching my butt to my, my heels to my butt on the other side. So you could bring your feet more forward, which will make it easier. If you are working on any of this arm balance stuff, it's a great way to then really like your butt and then bring your feet down. Press forward. Forward fold, and then all the way up tall. And I'm going to switch back to this side. So starting in your mountain pose, sit your hips really low. Touch the floor. And come up into your chair. I'm going to skip the back bend on this one. So just staying in your chair. Taking a couple breaths here. And sit your hips even lower. And then lift your chest up. And then we'll step our right leg back into the crescent lunge. High on the right ball mount of the foot. Square your hips. Press through that back leg. Pivot out through the right leg, coming into Skandasana towards the back of your mat. I'm going to play a little bit here. I'm going to come up onto my heel, lower down, come up, lower down. Make sure the knee is tracking in a way that's safe, doesn't feel wonky. And ideally, your heel stays down for this for a bind. So reaching your arms out to the side, binding around the right leg. Oh, my heel really wants to come up off the floor. If you're in the bind, let go. Reach your left arm towards your left foot. Reach your right arm up and over for a little side body stretch. Feel that really and strong in the left inner thigh. And then coming all the way up into your warrior two. And then breathe, settle your shoulders over your hips. Take your reverse warrior. Reach your arms forward, or if you just want to do weird challenges, I'm going to try this in reverse prayer, which may or may not work. Uh, roll forward onto your big toes, and the weight into your left leg, pressing up into order three. And 
And then again, right at the leg, wrap it around and sit back into your figure four. Whatever version arms you want. I just really like reverse prayer and I find the balance challenge of it interesting because it forces me to stay more open through the chest. If you're doing that one, we're going to release it. If you're all at the front of your mat like I keep doing, you're going to walk back a little bit, go back into your figure four. So we can do a flying pigeon if we like. So bring your chest low, sit your hips low. Hands to the floor is a, is a must for this one, but you can bring your hands to blocks if your hands don't quite get to the floor yet for a, a good way of, of letting it happen. Um, I just need to come up onto my toes a little bit to get my hands down. Foot needs to wrap around the upper arm. That's what keeps you there. So I can wrap my toes around my upper arm, then I can lift my bottom leg or maybe extend out. Arms are just like a regular curl. If you're all legs it up, bring your foot back, come back into your figure four. Give you a little time if you're playing with that, working on it, want a little bit more time. And then and when you do come out, step your right foot across your left. And we'll do that little stretch again, bring the hands to the floor, walk it out to the opposite side. forward, forward fold, inhale all the way up, step your left foot back, and we're just going to go right into the other side, and I'm going to scoot over here, and reach your arms down low, sit your hips back, way back towards the heels, come up into your chair, just going to hold this chair for a moment. We're getting stronger, drawing the thighs in, standing through the front of your hips as you sit low, and we start with a low belly. And step your left leg back, and drawing in through your inner thighs, lifting up and away, back of your head in line with your low back. Roll one to the left foot, right toes come up, knee tracks over left ankle, into our skandasana. Then you can try to lift and lower your heel a couple times if your heel's coming up off the floor. If it's not coming up off the floor or doesn't feel like it wants to, uh, not necessary. And then reach out. You can always do a half bind, maybe getting a full bind. You get the full bind, you begin to sit your hips back more, sit lower. Notice when you're just kind of collapsing into your joints of your left leg though. So this is about as low as I can go before I'm just kind of sinking in. So find where it's still active. And then reach your right arm up towards your right foot and left arm up over your ear. Holy, that feels intense. And then all the way back up to your warrior two. Reaching out through both arms. Lift and lengthen up into your armpits. Reverse your warrior. And then again, if you did a different arm variation, you can play here. Grab your elbows. Come into reverse prayer. It will make it harder, so just notice that. <laughs> Accept it. Coming into your warrior three. I like it also for warrior three because it does, I think, keep a little bit more aware of where you are in space with your back, keeping you a little bit more flat, that's a little bit more open, and then right at the leg, draw it around, figure four, sit back, so again I'm not just leaning and tilting out to the side, I'm sitting back, I'm still, there's still some activity there, it's the inner thigh, even as I'm opening my hip. to adjust on your mat you can if you want to use that as an excuse just have a moment where you're out of this posture that's perfectly fine 
Otherwise, you can try to just bring your hands towards the floor in this position. This side's my tighter side. So I'm gonna kind of move back, but this might be a no-go. We'll see how it is today. So I really need to get my foot to be high enough that my foot's gonna wrap around my upper arm. That's what helps you balance. So if you're not quite there yet, you can reach your hands towards the floor, sit your hips low, and feel like a wonderful stretch in your hip. If you can go up onto your toes, maybe keep your hands there. You can start to lift off the back foot. If you can keep the foot where you need it, maybe you can play with extending. Time to play with that to get the most out of it for you today. And then cross your left over the right. Take a forward fold. And walk over towards the left side. Let your hip begin and kind of wiggle your hip a little bit if that feels good. Just stretch everything out a little bit more. And again, that might be here. And then all the way up. One pose, send your left leg back. Forward fold. Exhale, let's go low. Inhale to halfway lift. Step your legs back. Down dog. And then forward into a plank. Knees down towards the floor. Upward facing dog or cobra. Back into downward facing dog. And then just walk your hands back towards your feet. Now we're going to come into a molasses squat so you can bring your feet hip width or a little wider and come down after all of the hip work. Last well, it shouldn't feel too terrible, but um, we'll see. Right. Knees track over ankles. Again, notice if you're kind of rounding and slumping in. See if you can lift, straighten your spine, or you can press your palms into each other and then your elbows up towards your knees to help you create a little space there. And we're gonna play with the bind here because why not? We did it in. Um, Skandasana, and this is a, maybe easier than Skandasana. So I'm going to start from the right side. Take your right hand, reach it out, and take your left arm and sweep it up. First, just stay here. Take a breath here. And then you can wrap your left hand around. Maybe you can get that wrap around through your right hand and get a bind. And then come back to center. And try the same thing on the other side. Left arm reaches out to the side. Right arm up as high as you can get. Like you're trying to get your leg all the way up into that upper shoulder. Right arm out to the side. Creating space. And then you can take one or both and try playing wrapping around. Maybe getting a little hook and grab with the fingers. And then notice if you're sinking down into your joints to make this happen. So see where you can still stay active through your feet and active through your legs. Come back to center. We'll try one more with the option to use that bind with the strength. So, again, try to get your shoulder, kind of like if you're going to go underneath your leg, even though you're not going underneath your leg. You want to get as high up as you can. Reach out wide. Get your bind. If you're doing your bind, you're going to walk your left foot in towards your center and come onto your big toes. Weight's going to shift over your left leg. And then you press up to stand. And then lower down with control, same way you came in. Back into your bad malasa. Back to center. It is moving in left. So again, get as open as you can. Reach out through your arms. Maybe the bind happens here, maybe not. You can still play with this even if you don't quite have the bind. I come up onto my right big toe. Walk my left, or sorry, left big toe, right foot comes underneath. 
I get that place where I can use both legs, I can lift my right leg and still use my left leg as I lift off the floor. Left leg's not doing much, but you get some control through your foot to help get your launch. And then come back out with control. Back into your bow malasana. And then back to your regular malasana. Okay, this would be a great place to do a curl, or I've been working on a lot of weird peacocks, so if you know peacock and you want to try weird peacock stuff with me, you can do that. Otherwise, from here, I have to switch off the mat. Off the mat. But um, you can go into your curl. If you already did the arm balance, you know, curl, hand shoulder width apart. This is a great place to start it from a lot because your knees are already up into your armpits or they have been for some time. So maybe staying there, maybe getting a lift off, and then maybe pressing straighter or higher. If you want to try weird peacock stuff, um, from this position, I think one of the things you have to do the most is to get the hands further forward first. Um, so maybe just playing with being in a kind of malasana squat with your butt up a little higher and your hands to the floor, the back of your hands, um, your wrists turn back like when we did at the beginning of class, a little warm up. So if you can get the wrists closer, I think it helps. Um, Elbows close helps. So I'm going to walk my hands further forward. But even though my hands go forward, my elbows really have to come all the way back in towards my ribs. So I'm going to find that balance. And then I keep expanding out through my legs. Draw my elbows back as far as I can. Keep the hips lifted light. And then press up into kind of a butterfly version. So a little bit feet to touch. Come back up. One more round. Curl. Hands to the floor. Lift. And looking forward. Or one more try. Add a weird peacock. <laughs> a butterfly peacock. Combo. Another place for your wrist. Again, I have to walk them forward, but you can play with this. That's how you need to get into it for me. Walk forward, and then bring my chest into it. Lift off. Maybe lift the leg straight, or maybe not. <sighs> All right. Well, let's bring the legs. Actually, let's lay down the belly and just take a rest here. And if you want a little stretch for the wrist, you can do a little wrist work, releasing the fingers and just rolling around or clicking four directions. And then just relax into your belly. And you can let your arms reach long in front of you or shake out your hips a little bit. And we're just going to do three bows, and I think that'll be it for our back bending for today. I think we're ready for bows though, because of all the lunge stuff we did. All those little back bends every time we did our vinyasa. So bring your legs up, hold on at the edges of your feet. And we'll do three, so if you have different arm variations you like, you can progress through. Relax your shoulders, lift your hips up, any version of bow you like, focusing more on the upper back or the whole back. But you should feel this in the front of your hips, nice release, stretch the front of your hips. After all the hip work we did, so that should be a nice focus. And release back down. And second round, I'm gonna walk my hands around the inside and do the wrap around the big toe. Make sure the knees are a little closer if they like to go wide. Relax your shoulders, you feel solid in the elbows. You need to make sure the shoulders are opening more, you're not forcing it at the elbow. Kick. down for 
for your third one. And staying wherever makes sense for you. I'm just going to bring my hands a little closer inside my ankles. And start to feel the elbows. Just make sure you can release that. Relax your shoulders. Okay. Let your shoulders and your chest roll back. Rocking to release any tension in your back. And let's bring the hands forward for a sphinx pose. So your shoulders are just right over your elbows, your elbows are right underneath your shoulders. Just getting a nice lift of your chest here. Make sure just a little cat cow in our sphinx pose. So you're gonna, you're gonna pull your low belly away from the floor and then release it, lift your chest. Exhale, tuck your chin, pull your low belly up and away. And inhale, release, try the shoulder blades together and down slightly. One more round, round it, scoop, lift. And then inhale and lower your shoulders, you lift your chest, you stretch your throat. And then walk your hands back and just lift up one more stretch for the front of the body. From here, go back into kind of a long, all fours position. Tuck your toes, come up into downward facing dog. Send your right leg up. Draw your knee towards your right wrist for half pigeon. So you can play with where you want to be for this one. I'm going to go to where I actually go and then try to get my chin a little closer to the front of my mat, finding that balance of where I can still keep my hips relatively even, but just walking into a place where I'm going to get a little bit more stretch. And then bring your chest forward, or if there's anything else that feels good for you, just letting yourself be relaxed for five breaths. No strain on the knee, flex your foot as much as feels helpful. So when we start to come up, we're going to roll onto our right hip and swing the left leg forward right away going into a double pigeon. So I'm going to face you guys for this one, but you can just stay where you are and just bring your left shin over on top of your right shin. So depending on your hips, like my left leg is going to be up pretty high, but just stacking the shin on top of the shin as best you can. You can always sit on something if that helps you um, have a more lifted position so you're not rolling back. Um, and then just tent your hands on the sides of your body, flex both feet, and take a forward fold. If the knees are kind of high, leaning your forward fold to the left might help help release that knee down, but no pain in the knee. And then inhale, come up. We're going to stay in this double pigeon position. So if this is not accessible to stay in without your hands, um, release your legs down into a cross-legged seat. Um, and from here, I'm going to take both hands towards my abdomen. And I'm going to interlace my fingers and just slide my hands up my chest. Coming up like I'm going to do the breathing exercise from the beginning of the Bikram class. Lift up, open the throat. And then slide my hands back, bring my chin back down. We're flowing through this a couple of times. Slide the hands up, lift, and lower. Three more. Two 
four. Last one. And then we'll release the left leg back. Actually, let's just cross at the ankles and you can use that as a way to bring your body forward and come onto your knees and then tuck and come up into down facing dog. Find down more facing dog. Do the same thing in the left. Bring your left leg up, lean towards your left wrist. And you can stay wherever it makes sense for you. You can scoot that leg back like I just did, or you can bring the front shin a little forward, finding where it makes sense. You can put your hip on a block. Just finding where you're gonna get a nice stretch where it's gonna feel therapeutic. We're gonna stay here for five breaths. So hold forward if that feels good. No pain in the knee, keep your feet active. You can even tuck your back toes and keep your back leg up if that feels like it's getting the job done a little bit better. for the double pigeon. I'm going to switch back to face, you guys. So now my right shin stacked across my left shin. Both shins parallel to the front of the mat. Adjust your seat if you need to. Tent up on your fingertips and take a forward fold. Again, if the knee is quite high, you can let your weight shift over to that side slightly or even frame up foot and knee to help you release down into that side a little bit more. that same little um, thing with the hands. If you remember which thumb was on top, switch. Bring your hands towards your belly with the interlaced fingers. Just slide them up your body and then lift your chest and let your head go back. And then one more time, hands to the belly, slide up. Lift your chest, lift, stretch your throat. Three more. Two more. And the last one, chin comes down, back of neck long, slide the hands up, replace that with stretching your throat. And bring the hands down. One more fold forward. And then for you guys, you can just extend your legs forward. Slide your heels in, coming into a boat, so you can keep your hands tense along the sides as you bring your legs up and find the perfect spot. Switch to this direction. Legs can stay as bent as you need. Arms can stay there or come up. You can hold on along the back of your thighs if you like, or extend your legs higher and straighter. Stay wide across your chest and not collapsing into your chest. Lower our boat slightly or a lot. Lift your boat. Lower belly button pulling in towards your spine. Lift. This time lower. Send your left arm up overhead. And lift. It can be a very small movement. Lower right arm over your head. One more each side. Lower left arm overhead. Lower right arm overhead. And lower both arms overhead. And hold it back up, hug your knees in. In this position, bring your feet about hip width distance. Walk your hands back, tense it behind you. 
Um, and then maybe walk my feet a little bit further forward. Right foot comes into your figure four position. Flex your foot. Bring your left heel back by your left butt as close as you can. And then walk your hands in as close as you can so you feel this stretch. And make sure the shoulders are still pushing down. You're not getting your shoulders up into your ears. And then we're going to extend the left leg out. See if you can hold the right leg up. Bring your fingertips forward. Lower onto your back. Bring your left leg to meet your right foot again. Press your forearms, your palms into the floor. See if you can lift off into a, a version of plow with figure four legs. And roll up. And then you can make this rocking and rolling. You can keep your forearms into the floor. Or if you don't need them, you can bring them up. Make sure you don't slam into your head. Head stays up off the floor. Let me go back the furthest, you're on your shoulders. Ooh, that is tight. If you're comfortable, you can hold your left foot. By getting on your shoulders. So if you don't normally do shoulder stand, this is not going to make sense yet. Stay on your forearms. And then release back. Ooh, same thing, other side. So walk the hands back behind you. Maybe you need to walk your feet a little bit forward. Left leg crosses over. Slide your right heel up towards your butt and walk your hands in as close as you need to feel it. Getting out, putting a lot of pressure on the kneecap, so I'm flexing my foot and I'm on the top of my leg, not my knee proper. And pressing my left knee out. Shoulders down. Then you can start to slide the right leg forward. Keep your left leg up. See if you can keep that same position. Bring your fingertips forward. Roll back. Forms to the floor. Bring your right leg back up into your foot. And then you can roll back towards the plow. Rocking back and forth. Again, you can make this smaller. You can come onto your forms and up. Come onto your forms and up. Watch, because the left foot might slide. Or if you're comfortable, you can go all the way back. Can that bend into your head? So keep a slight tuck of your chin. No hands if you don't need any hands. This should be a lot of abs. Just want to get the boat. Little prep. Last one. And all the way up. All right. Bend the hands back behind. Bring your tips facing towards your feet. Bring your forearms to the floor, and then you might need to shift your hands forward so you can stay up on your forearms and release your head back. But just because your head doesn't touch doesn't mean you cannot bring your head to the floor. It just means you need to bring your hands lower so you can try bringing your hands lower closer in and see where that places where your head touches, but there's no weight in your head. And then you can stay there. If that feels like it's not safe in your neck, obviously come back up and just relax your head towards the floor with your elbows closer uh, towards your shoulders up the body, or you can stay there, palms to the floor, no way in the head, point your toes for long fish. Maybe lift the rib cage. And then lower, carefully pressing through the forearms to bring the back of the head towards the floor. Draw your right knee up towards your chest. Bring the sole of that foot down, sole of the left foot down, eagle legs, tuck this arms, walk your left foot so it's really in the center of you, so you're going to have to sit your hips up and square to the center of you, and then even a little bit over towards the right, and then lower your knees towards the left, so we're keeping the torso more long, and look over towards your right shoulder. If you want to deepen this, you can take your right hand 
to the foot that's close to your right hand. And take your left leg out with your left, right, right leg out, hold your left hand. For me, I don't quite get my shoulder blades to the floor when I do this, but it still feels really good. And you lay the shoulder blades down the floor. And we'll try on the other side. So release back into your eagle legs. Roll back to center. Practice the arms. Switch your left leg over the right and walk your right foot, heel toe it in a little bit over towards the, the left. And then drop yourself down or even heel toe the foot a little bit more. So you're still more of a long line through your torso. You can stay here. Looking over your left shoulder, should feel like a wonderful stretch already. If you want to make it more, again, you can draw the back hand towards the foot that's behind. Cactus arm will come up and grab the other foot and extend it out longer. And try to, even if the shoulder blades not to the floor, roll that shoulder back towards the floor. Slowly, bring the legs back, back to center. Bring the soles of the feet to touch for your butterfly. And bring your hands towards your belly, or I really like to bring sometimes hands, one hand to belly, one hand to chest is very relaxing. Or I also like to make kind of a diamond shape and bring my hands up overhead, kind of parallels what my lower body's doing and feels really relaxing for me. So choose where you'd like to be. This is time for your final savasana. So stay here, five breaths, 10 breaths, or as much time as you need to let your body relax from all your hard work. Good job.